One Piece Heart of Gold review. Now I just got done seeing One Piece Heart of Gold and this review is not going to have any editing in it because I was not very pleased with it and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did not like it. Alright, I did not like it. I thought it was very dry. It was not, it was like border a lot. It was like maybe a small percent of comedy, maybe like 5% of it was comedy, maybe not even that. It was not funny. And One Piece is normally, you know, very comedy heavy. Nick was not, it was not funny at all. Honestly, I don't think, I may have chuckled like once in the very beginning when Zoro and Sanji were, ar were like arguing about the observation hockey thing. I may have chuckled like once. So much, there was like no humor in it. I'm going to be honest, I hated it. I hated the whole, the crew get captured. I'm sick of that tactic. They use it constantly in the anime and festivals, and it, I'm sick of it. Alright, Luffy could have taken that guy. There were multiple times where I was just thinking, what? Also, like, they were just... They weren't binding with Sea Stone. Like, if you had waited a long when they were going through all the traps, they weren't binding with Sea Stone. So I'm just wondering why Chopper and Robin and Brooke haven't just broken out. And then giving Usopp and Nani their weapon back, and bam, problem solved. I'm pretty sure Luffy, I'm pretty sure Nami, Usopp, Robin, Chopper, and Brooke could have not, maybe not beaten them, honestly not beaten them. Because Mad Treasure pushed Luffy into Gear Secondo, or Gear Second. But let's be honest, they could have gotten away. And they worked together. They could have gotten away. They could have gotten out of there. That didn't make any sense. They were just, they were letting their prisoners out so they could do the test. When they could easily turn on them. I mean, that was weird. I mean, and the, the child was like, bored. The child, the kid, Ogle, I think her name was, in the beginning of the specials, he was really good. The first, like, 15 minutes of this are pretty damn good. She was really good in the beginning. But then she kind of, but the minute she got captured, she agreed to help them find the pure gold. The minute that happened, she lost her character. Okay, she lost a good chunk of her character. And like a lot of the other characters in this, the very dry, like, like only the straw hats, even when the straw hats are captured, they still have their quirks and they're still like entertaining to watch. This was just, it was boring. I think Robin made like one comment on how they could all die, and it wasn't even very funny to be completely honest. And that was before the whole capture. I mean, really, it was, it didn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, in terms of the way they were written, I mean, uh, I was not happy with this. I mean, it just had some hype a moment, like, the very beginning of it. The very beginning of mo of it, seeing that member of CP0 or Cyberpole 0, seeing that guy, like, fighting with, with Mad Treasure was really nice. Then we got to see Lucy, and based off of this, I don't know what level, uh, I don't know what level of involvement Oda had in this, but it looks like Rob Lucci is a, oh god. It looks like Rob Lucci is like the head of Cyberpole, because everybody's reporting back to him. So we got a little bit of interesting information, but I want to wait until Film Gold, because this wasn't even directed by Oda. The Film Gold I know is, so we'll see what goes on with that then. We also do get 100% confirmation that this is post- the state of Don Quixote, Don Flamingo, which is nice. And they all have their updated bounty posters. But then again, the whole crew is together. The, and it's clearly not post the big but current events in the manga. So this movie doesn't fit into the canon timeline. We know that. And the whole crew is together, but it's post Jack Rosa. So unless you expect me to believe that it's post, this is like post to all the crap that's happening in the manga right now. No. No, I did. I mean, that's really, there isn't much more to it. I mean, things, a lot of things happen in this movie, and they just happen. There's a lot of things, there isn't a lot of cause and effect in it. It's like, 
Also, they were all in chains when Brooklyn played the piano. So how the hell did Robin and Chopper get out? They were they let out? Like they don't show us how they got out. They don't show us that. I feel like there's like an extended edition of this movie. Because a lot of this movie or festival or whatever you want to call it feels like it's missing. I feel like I just watched clips. So like a ton of I feel like you did the game took up they took a ton of clips of it and they threw them together and we're missing part bits and pieces of it throughout the thing. I do really feel like that because honestly, this thing would just, it would dry the anim it was always it was also very gloomy. Like the art and the coloring were kinda of gloomy. It wasn't like that bright, colorful like, really cheery animation style you're used to in one page. They were very gloomy. But you can tell it wasn't trying to be gloomy. Like, and if it was trying, trying to be gloomy, I would get it, but it wasn't. It just was. I mean, well, even the music was gloomy. It was like, it was not. I did not enjoy watching it relatively. I mean, it did have some good points. Like, really the only really good thing I can say about that is. The final fight was decent. The fight between Luffy and Mad Treasure was good. We got to learn about the more about the connection between Nami and the purple-haired girl whose name I already forgot. But we got to learn more about their connection. Apparently, like Nami and her soul were both thieves, and they both stole from Mad Treasure. And the purple-haired girl was a complete bitch, and like you know, turned her back on Nami and ran away. And Nami was left to nearly die at the hand of Mad Treasure. This doll apparently takes place before she meets Luffy. By the way, her boobs are bigger than they were when she met Luffy in the flashback here. I don't know why, but I think apparently, according to this, her boobs got bigger, then they shrunk, and then they got bigger again, according to this. Because, I don't know. I honestly don't know why that is. Same thing in the episode of uh, Mary. Like, those little, little things are gigantic. First thing I noticed, because it was, it was such a proportional difference from what I was thinking about when I thought of pre time getting on me, and pre meeting Luffy, but whatever. I mean, ugh. But the only thing, the one thing I can say I loved about this was Sanji's fighting in it. It wasn't any, there was a little bit of it, like, there was a little bit of it. There was actually was, like, one of those super those scenes that the fans of it now call him a Super Saiyan scene. Where he like, like lights his whole body on fire, and there's like flames, like a flaming aura, and his hair sits up a little bit, and he looks like he's a super saiyan. Yeah, that was there. And when he got angry, that was there like twice. There was a fun little throwback to a thriller bark and punk hazard, I enjoyed that. But, the only other really good thing was Sanji's fighting, because he was doing his old style of fighting. Like, remember how pre time kept? He would just kick his opponents, like, he would go into these long, drag out attacks with, like, with multiple sequences, and he would, like, kick the guy to pieces. Yeah, that was, that was here. Like, the old Sanji, when he would, like, do, like, deliver, like, ten basic kicks, all different styles, very martial arts. That was there. The choreography that we all loved from Sanji's like, was in here. Unlike with, uh, Loro, who was Loro fight in here, right through trash. His swords were like throwing white. They didn't even look like blades. They, and I did like he was shooting paper out of his swords at one point. I mean, I did not really like this special. Uh, I still like their film gold because the trailer for film gold, o Oda is behind it and it looks very One Piece. But if I had to rate this movie, I'm going to be honest, I would give it like a 3 out of I, it wasn't terrible. You, you know, it was terrible, I think. 3 out of 10. I'll give like a 3 out of 10. It looked good. They had a decent plot. But it was just, it felt so stale and dry, dull and boring. The whole movie, I mean, the whole movie, I kind of thinking, when is it going to be over? This is boring. But yeah, these are my thoughts on uh, One Piece, Hearts of Gold. My uh, review for... Episode zero should be up on Friday, so keep your eyes out for that. I'm going to be posting it on Wednesday. Probably should be up in about like seven. Probably probably be up like seven o'clock on Wednesday. Probably around there. 
But uh, yeah. So, but my but my review for episode zero will be up on Friday. I will post it tomorrow. But I'm already doing the One Piece live reaction and the review and the Bleak review. Oh, I could go on and on and how pissed I am about Bleak at Bleak right now. But that's not what this video is for. So yeah, three out of ten. Honestly, it does tie into film goals. So if you're like a hardcore fan of the series like me. And you need to see everything that, that ties into film gold. Watch it. If you're just a casual fan and you really don't care as long as you just see the main movie and get the enjoyment from the main movie, do not watch this. This is a waste of your time. This, I was, I'm very let down with this. Very disappointed in them. Because they had something great here. They really did. They had something with great potential, but it just, no. I had not enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Tell me your thoughts on One Piece Hearts of Gold in the comment section down below. Subscribe for more videos. And the One Piece Nation signing out. Have a great day.